Hi, and welcome to Lippy Presents Ghost News Network. Today is our question of the week. James, you've got our question for us. What do you got? All right. So the question this week is, how do you know if something is paranormal or just a trick of the eyes and ears? Good question. Uh, good question. Um, well, with trick of the eyes, so a um, while back, uh, after I started the group, and I moved into my apartment with my grandmother's house. Um, it's a, it was a basement apartment, L-shaped. And I would be watching TV, couch was here, TV was here, and then like it, it was an L-shape, so you can keep going straight and then down that way. So I was centered here. And every once in a while, I would get, look like a shadow person, kind of peeking over, and I would look. It happened quite often. And I thought it was maybe me. Maybe it was just, you know, my peripherals messing with me. You know, I really didn't think much of it. And then I was, I had two of my friends over and we were watching a movie. We were watching a movie. This thing peeks over. And all three of us love it at the same time. That's one way of knowing. Yeah. Because when you have, and I never told anybody that. That night when everyone looked at the same time, I was like, you guys saw that? And they're like, what the fuck is that? And I'm like... That's my shadow person. <laughs> and uh, so that is one way to not have a trickery of your eyes if another person sees it. If you're the only one, it's just a personal experience. Um, you can't base anything off of that. Great experience for you, but it doesn't mean anything. It means something to you, but nobody else. As far as um, hearing goes, I mean, that's when... <clears throat> That's the fight between audio cassette and digital. And right. We always talk about this. Right. You know, when you talk about audio cassette, when it records, it records as is. Right. It doesn't try to change sounds of anything or anything like that, as opposed to digital, where it might take a sound, say something, sound of your stomach growling or somebody wheezing, and it digitizes it, where it can now sound like somebody screaming or growl, right. you know, and that's the difference between the two. So it's hard, especially if you're on an investigation and you hear something and then it doesn't get picked up on audio. And that happens a lot. It happens yeah. a lot of times. Right. I mean, we've heard stuff, but the audio never picked it up. And, and um, you would think it would. It would be loud enough for, for multiple people to hear it. But it's all about the evidence and, and how you look at your evidence. I mean... If you deem it as just a personal experience, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, just because you're the only one that saw it. Or if we're out in the field or somewhere and I see something and by the time you look, it's gone. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It's just, that's my personal experience. It doesn't really hold a whole lot of weight on an investigation unless you have a lot of things packing it up. Right. That That's how I visually, like, look at all that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm the same thing. You, you see or hear something, it's great, but if you don't capture it on audio or video or you don't have multiple witnesses, it just kind of falls to personal experience. And it's just important if you have a paranormal group out there that you don't base your investigations on personal experiences, right. you know. Um, just because there is so many human factors that are involved, there's also the Phillips experiment. Like, if you're told you're going to hear... X happened at a certain time, or these are just the claims of the location, and you go in there, chances are, you've already got that set up in your head, something's going to trigger, and you're going to make that connection, because that's just how your brain works. And it's just it's just an, another form of matrixing, or mm -hmm. pareidolia, whatever it is, uh, it's just how your brain functions. So, I mean, yeah, it's... Like you said, with visual stuff, it's great when you have multiple people. Like when you, me, and Brandon saw that white figure walk oh, across yeah. the field. Like right. that and was, our stories yeah. match. Yeah. You know? And that was like the same thing with, with the Mount Misery thing. When, right. When you and Shannon, Shannon saw that, okay, guys, don't talk. Let's get back to the office. You sit at that end. You sit at this end. Draw what you saw. Right. You know, when you do stuff like that, it brings a lot more credibility to what you're seeing. And then right. you can enter that in kind of as evidence almost to your report because... Nobody's talking about what they saw. Now they're drawing it or they're telling two separate people and then those people talking it matches. You know, this right. is stuff that you, you gotta do really controlled. Quick. You've gotta have controlled yeah. environment right. when it comes to that right. stuff with your investigation. And we do that yeah. a lot of times. We do. If, oh, yeah. if we're out on an investigation and two people 
might smell something, we'll, we'll be like, don't say anything. Okay, you and James go over there. Me and Dimitri are going to go over there. I'll be like, Dimitri, what did you smell? And the person's going to tell James what they smelt. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and meet up and be like, all right, what did your person tell you? And it's all right. called on audio right. to back ourselves up. Yeah. And now if they matched, bam, now, now you got some type of evidence, you know, right. you can utilize that. So these are just little tips and keys that you can do when you, when you pick this stuff up. And, and one of the most important things you can ever do is you should be running audio from the beginning of your investigation right. to your end, not doing sessions uh, because sounds are going to happen throughout the night no matter where you are. Uh, it's important to note everything that you hear. Right. So uh, if Mike's clearing his throat, I would say, note in the audio, Mike clearing right. his throat, note in this. Yep. Or if I heard something that we thought was paranormal, I would say, Dimitri, go back 30 mm -hmm. seconds and re-listen. Right. You know, just making audio cues to yourself whenever you're on an investigation, it's going to make it, first of all, easier to find an EVP, because you're noting it, or a VP in this case, because mm -hmm. if you're all hearing it, you pick it up. It's a voice phenomenon. It's not an EVP. But, yeah, I mean, that, those are the types of things you just want to do to make sure that you have that basis covered. Right. What do you think, James? Yeah, I mean, that's the endless fight, really. Eyewitness testimony is the most mm -hmm. unreliable okay. testimony you could possibly have. Right. So right. you really need that backup, whether that's a camera or multiple audios mm -hmm. catching the same thing or right. something different. It's really a difficult thing to actually do like it sounds easy oh how do you oh, decide yeah. whether it's paranormal or trick sure. but it's actually the hard, one of the hardest things if right. not the hardest thing oh, yeah. we Absolutely. can do Absolutely. and it really does require a lot of patience a lot of experience and mm -hmm. capturing either something on an actual piece of equipment that we can then go and cooperate with what we're seeing or right. what we're hearing or something like that mm -hmm. so. and when it comes to audio you know if, if we're out on an investigation and we have 10 investigators and, and James picks something up, he brings in a meeting and he plays for everybody. And yep. we all listen to it and we'll really rip it apart. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When in doubt, we use a term called Occam's Razor. The simplest explanation tends to be the correct one. So if we think, you know what? I was in the other group. I was maybe 20 yards away and I sneezed at that moment. I have that on my audio. Chances are, that's what you may have picked up. Right. And we throw it out. Right. Don't be afraid to throw stuff out. Good find. Yeah. Great find. You're listening. That's you're definitely doing that your doesn't analysis. doesn't take it away from you, but right. it, it helps build your group's credibility towards stuff that eventually you're going to really get. Right. You know, so. Right. Yeah, we scrutinize the shit out of everything. So. We know. Absolutely. And everybody that's out there that does this, so you should. That's just. Mm -hmm. Don't always be quick to assume paranormal because. Paranormal is the abnormal right. and normalcy. So that's what you're looking for. Um, so always try to find the reasonable explanation first. Good question. So, yeah. Anybody else have anything they want to add? No. Nope. No? That's it. What do you guys think about this question? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you haven't yet, you can continue to follow us by clicking that like, share, and subscribe. You can also click the little notification bell to know all of our content is uploaded to YouTube. So thank you guys very much again for joining us on this latest edition of Ghost News Network. And until next time, take care, guys.